देते Simple Storage Service S3. AWS S3 is a pretty interesting and versatile tool. It's got a lot of use cases associated with it. You can use S3 for archiving, analytics, storage, and backup. Furthermore, you can find a lot of integrations with other AWS services such as CloudTrail, the key management service that we saw in IAM, AWS Athena, and storage gateway. The reason S3 is used so commonly and is such a popular service is because it has many benefits. S3 is extremely cost effective and is really good for hosting. The second benefit of S3 is that it is extremely durable. Apart from that, S3 is highly available and very accessible. These are just some of the things that make S3 such a popular service in the market today. As part of its marketing, AWS says that S3 has unlimited storage. For our use cases, what that basically means is S3 is endlessly scalable. You can keep making it grow to meet your requirements. And making a service grow is much cheaper than having on-premises hardware being bought and set up to do the same. When you're naming your S3 bucket, there's a few things that you need to keep in mind. Certain naming conventions need to be followed when you are naming your S3 bucket. If these conventions are not followed, your S3 bucket may run into problems. So the first thing you need to keep in mind is that your bucket must be between three and 63 characters long. So say you have a bucket called me you're not going to be able to name your bucket me because it's too short. Now, the second convention you have to follow is that your name can only consist of lowercase letters, numbers, dots, and hyphens. So say you have a name like this, hashtag my S3 hat. You're not going to be able to name your bucket like this. The third naming convention is that your name must begin and end with a letter or a number. So say for example, you have a bucket called forward slash one dot my S3. You will not be able to name your bucket this because it starts with a forward slash. The next convention to be followed is that your S3 bucket must not be formatted as an IP address. So say for example, we name our bucket 192.168.3.4. This is not acceptable and will not be able to be used as a name. Another convention is that your name must not start with the prefix XN. So if you have this bucket called XN dash my bucket, this isn't going to work. So it's going to be denied. The next convention is that your S3 bucket must not end with the suffix dash S3 alias. So say for example, you have a bucket called my bucket dash S3 alias again, you're not going to be able to use that. Moving on to the last two points, you need to keep in mind that names need to be unique within the partition. So when you go through your S3, you're going to see that you'll have a bunch of different S3 names, but you will never be able to have two S3 buckets with the same name. And lastly, buckets used with the Amazon S3 transfer acceleration can't have dots in their name. It's a common misconception that files are stored in S3 the same way that we would find them in our computer systems, which is to say that it is assumed that files are stored in S3 in a file hierarchy. This is not the case. Files are not stored in a file hierarchy within S3. Instead, they follow a flat URL namespace where each object has its own unique key. So say, for example, you had a file on your desktop. The way you would locate that file is it would be in a hierarchy. So it would be in C, user, home, desktop, file. However, if you put that same file in an S3 bucket, the way you would locate that file is it would have its own unique URL. 
So it would have the bucket name s3.amazonaws.com forward slash the unique key assigned to that object. The more common use cases that you would find for Amazon S3 are in the forms of data lake and big data analytics. S3 can create a data lake to hold raw data in its native form, then use machine learning tools, query in place, and analytics to draw insights. S3 works with AWS lake formation to create data lakes, then define governance, security, and auditing policies. Together, they can be scaled to meet your growing data stores, and you'll never have to make an investment up front. The second use that you will see primarily with S3 is backup and restoration. S3 provides secure and robust backup and restoration solutions.